Hi, I'm Ron with Cruising This Old Boat, and today I'm going to show you how to install a Checco C Gauge G2 analog to digital converter. I removed all the analog gauges that were on the boat and replaced them with digital gauges, which required an analog to digital converter. So I researched further to find out how to solve that problem, and everything I could find pointed towards this Checco C Gauge G2. And this is made here in America. It has a much more complicated calibration table that you have to set up. It's not as easy as some of the others, but uh, supposedly it will read accurately. So we're gonna go ahead and install this and see how it goes. Now, one thing I wanna tell you, if you're considering getting the Checco G2 um, analog to digital converter one thing you need to know is aside from the expense of that you're going to need one of these they use special connectors on the G2 that make it waterproof that's nice but you can only crimp it with this tool uh, which is over $300 for this tool. So when you're looking at installing this unit, uh, bear that cost in mind. You're going to have to uh, either find someone that's got one that'll loan it to you, find a place you can rent it, or you're going to have to do like I did and pay over $300 to get this tool that you may only use once. <laughs> so um, just want to let you know about that. So let's get started. All right, the first thing you want to consider is that you want to mount your Checco digital converter outside of the engine room, if at all possible. I know sometimes you can't help it, but the high temperatures could affect it. So uh, I found a place right behind this ladder. The other side of that wall is our engine room. So I'm going to mount it out here. It'll be outside the engine room, but for quick access, I'm going to drill the hole and we'll just go right through and we're in the engine room with the wires. So that's what we're getting ready to do now. So once you have picked your location for the installation of your Checo C gauge G2, then you are going to go ahead and mount it. This is a totally waterproof unit, uh, so you can mount it in any orientation. That looks pretty good. Right, the first thing you want to do, you're going to strip the wire, and then what you're going to do is take your DTT-16-00 crimping tool. It's a 16 gauge wire that I'm using. so. That would be the upper one. This does 14 gauge or 16 gauge. So we're going to drop it in the hole. And then you partially crimp it just to where it, the, the connector won't, the pin, to where the pin won't spin around anymore. I can't pop it out. It's locked in place, but I haven't crimped anything yet. It's just being held in place. Then I'm going to put my wire as far as it'll go in there. And then I'm going to crimp until it releases again. Once it releases, you've got a good connection. Next, you're going to push it in here and this is my RPM this is going to my uh, for my tachometer the other end is hooked up to the pickup off the alternator on the, the main engine so this is pin 1 if you only have one engine you're going to put it in pin 1 which is my situation if you have two engines then you're going to put one in pin 1 and the other in another pin I forget I didn't look because I only have one engine, but but anyway, so 
So this is pin one down here. Yep. The upper left when you're reading it that way. And you're just going to push it in until you you hear it click. Once it clicks, it won't come back out. Okay? And that's it. Then you take this wedge and you just push it in there until it clicks. And there you go. That's all there is to it. And the tachometer goes into this. There's four ports here. The first one is power. The second one is your tachometer. And your third one is your sensing ports. Those are ones you're using. So this is going to go into the second one. And it should only go one way. Yep. If I try to put it that way, it won't, it won't go up in there. So it is keyed. There's the key right there. Just want to push it up in there until it latches. There you go. And that one is done. We now have our PM hooked up, and next we'll do our. Uh, I've got uh, this blue wire is for the temperature gauge on the freshwater coolant, and the yellow wire is my oil pressure sensor. So we're going to get those hooked up. Now, this was a brown connector. The RPM went in. The, the tachometer went into a brown connector. For the sensors, you use the green connector, and this is our water coolant temp. We're going to put our water temp sensor into pin 3. Again, just shove it into the end of the connector, and then push it until you hear it click. Then our oil pressure sensor is going to go into pin 4. And you can see that makes for a real nice watertight seal. That's what these connectors, these are Deutsch connectors. And that's what it's all about. Again, just take and put this wedge in and push until it clicks. All right, then we're going to insert it into this third from the right. And again, it will only go in one way. There we go. All right, so next we want to hook up our power line. And that goes into the black connector. The hot goes into pin two and the ground into pin one. Should be the only ones we need in that plug, so we'll go ahead and insert the wedge and insert the plug into its proper proper receptacle. And by the way, I don't think you can get these in the wrong receptacle because I think they're all coated differently. There we go. 
And finally, you want to plug your C-Gage G2 into your Numia 2000 backbone. For calibrating your C-Gage G2, they supply this cable, which hooks in right there, and then you have a USB cord, which plugs into a laptop computer so that you can set up your parameters. Thanks for watching.